Today I'm going to be showing you how to build to your Android phone from Windows computers. If you want to build to an iOS device, you'll actually have to have a Mac for that, along with Xcode installed. But for Android, I'm just going to show you the process. So for Android, you want to make sure under installs, for your version that you want to build to your phone, click these three dots and add modules. Then you're going to want to install the Android build support along with the SDK, NDK, and OpenJDK tools. And so if you install this while the editor is open, make sure to close and reopen the editor so the changes take place. And so luckily with this, this is actually all we need. Unity will install it for us and update our paths accordingly. So when we build to our phone now, we don't have to do any sort of processing like previously where we had to download Android Studio. So once you download that, you can go to Edit Preferences. And if you go to External Tools, if you scroll down, you'll see that our paths are updated here. So JDK, SDK, and NDK are installed, and they're installed within Unity itself. So make sure these are updated correctly. If not, there was something wrong with the installation, or you might want to go the manual route and download it via Android Studio. So now we can go to File and Build Settings. And when you build, you want to make sure, first of all, that you have your scene here. So you can add your open scene. So this adds the current scene that you're on. And then you start off in the PC platform. You're going to want to click Android and switch. So when we click PC, for example, it says switch platform. If you're on another one that's not Android, this switch platform button will be here as well. And so you can see that my device is actually connected, but I'll show you how to enable this on your device in one second. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to enable developer mode on your device. This might change depending on what device you have. If it's different from your device, I definitely suggest searching online how to enable developer mode for your phone. All right, so in your phone, you're going to want to go to settings and then general. Once you're at general, you want to scroll down where it says about phone. Then you want to click software info and then under the build number, press it seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is telling me that I'm already a developer, so I already activated it. But if you're not a developer, it'll activate developer mode for you. And once you go back here, after you've enabled it, you'll see this developer options here. And you'll see that there are some options here that we can enable. And so we want to make sure that USB debugging mode is enabled. So that will allow us to build to our phone. If we don't have that enabled, we won't really be able to build to our phone. And another option I like to select is stay awake, which is when the phone is charging, the screen won't turn off. So if you're developing, this is pretty useful because if you don't have this enabled, the screen will just keep turning off constantly. All right, and so when that's done, make sure to connect your phone to your computer using a USB cable. And this is actually a pretty old phone, so it's kind of dirty, but let's ignore that. All right, and now that that's done, once you connect to your phone to your computer, there might be a pop-up on your phone that says, do you want this computer to be able to send information to this phone? And just click yes. If you don't select that, then the computer won't be able to build to the phone. So now your device will appear under Run Device here. You can just refresh and it will appear here, LGE. And so now we can actually just build to our phone. If you're developing, I definitely suggest just turning on Development Build here, and that will allow you to build to your phone directly. If you don't have this enabled, you'll have to create a key for your app. So we can do that by going to Player Settings. And under Player, we can scroll down under Publishing Settings. There's a key store manager here. And so the key store manager just keeps track of keys for your application. And it's kind of a certificate that you are the creator or the developer of the application. And this actually allows you to create builds for your application to publish onto the app store or the Play Store. So if you actually lose this key, someone can take your build and modify it. So you want to make sure to keep this key safe and sound. So you can actually go to Key Store Manager, and up here you can create a new key. You can do it anywhere or in a dedicated... You can either do it anywhere or in a dedicated location. I'm going to click Save here. You can name it something else. And here you want to put in the password for your key. So let's just put in a password here. And here are some other options that you can enable for your key. So you can put your first and last name, your organization, your city, and your alias, which is kind of like the ID for the key. So I can just name it key and you can just put the same password as you did up there and you can just add a new key here. And then here you can just click yes and you can see it'll add your key here and with your password. So make sure the password is here. If not, it won't let you build to your phone. So if you actually want to disable this, you can just unselect the custom key store here and it will be signed with a debug key. So while you're developing, you can just use the debugger mode. And so once that's done, I just want to go over some other options before you actually build to your phone. So right here, you can put your company name, the product name, which is the name of the app and the current version. Then here you can add in a texture 2D for the icon as well as a default cursor. I can just select the circle here and it'll show up 
That'll be the icon you see on your phone. You can also see the icon here. There's more icons that you can add here for different resolutions and devices. Then under resolution and presentation, we can specify our resolution and whether we want the game to be in landscape or portrait mode or both. So the default orientation, for example, it's auto rotation. So the user can rotate it any way they like, but you can put it portrait or landscape. The splash image is when you open the game, it's the logo that shows up. And so Unity will actually show their logo automatically if you don't have the paid version, which most people don't unless they're making $100,000 or more a year. And if you're making that much money a year with your game, then you're doing amazing. But here you can add in your logo. So let's just add in a sprite here, it can be anything. And you can choose how long you want the logo to stay on the screen, as well as the background of the logo. Then under other settings, these are more specific settings for rendering on your phone. I usually keep these as they are. Some things you might wanna know is the package name. So make sure this matches the name up here. So it's com dot your company name dot your app name. And then you wanna make sure you have the correct version of your game. So this depends on what version your game is currently on. And here's the minimum API level and target API level. So the target API level is usually highest. So whichever one the user has installed that's higher than the minimum, it's fine. However, the minimum, we actually want to set it to what the Play Store allows, unless you're not planning on uploading to the Play Store. So just from searching on Google, they seem to have a new API level requirement. So API level 29 or higher starting in August 2021. So we can either set that to 29 or 30 here. I'll just set that to 29. And those are the main settings for our build. So now we're ready to build. Make sure you're on Android, you have your scene added and your phone shows up here. We want to make sure to select development build here as well if you're doing a debug mode, which for your first build, I'm supposing you do a development build. Hopefully your first build isn't the one you publish to the Play Store. And now we can just select build and run and here will be our APK, which is just a file extension for Android apps. And we can just save this here. I'm just gonna click yes since I already have this installed. And you'll see that my phone is actually so old that it only supports API level 24. So I'm just gonna go into the player settings and set the minimum to 19. However, when you actually publish to the Play Store, it'll throw an error if you don't have the correct API version. But we can just build and run here and I'll select yes once again. And if you get a pop-up here on your phone saying what kind of transfer mode you want to use between your phone and the computer, make sure to select photo transfer. That one works for transferring applications from your computer to your device. And make sure you just click yes if pop-up comes up saying do you want to authorize this computer to build this to the phone. All right, so now your application should have built to your phone. If there's an error, you'll see it in the console here. You'll see that ours completed with success. Usually it will tell you what the issue is. And then I found that one of my errors one time was that I had the wrong key enabled. I didn't have the password for the key. So if you're using a key, make sure you have the password set or that you're using developer mode. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you. I definitely recommend using Unity's NDK, JDK, and SDK to build to your phone because Unity has some specific requirements about versions for each of those and it can get a little confusing and very error prone if you try to do it via Android Studio. So luckily Unity has integrated this into their engine. And so I wanna thank my patrons for all of their support. It really helps me keep making these kind of videos. And I'd like to thank my new patrons in the supporter tier we have. And in the enthusiastic tier we have YX, Carol, and Aaron. Thank you so much for the support, I really appreciate it. And if you're interested, the link is in the description. I offer source code, early access for videos, and two exclusive Discord channels. And if you haven't already, make sure to join the Discord channel where you can chat, post memes, or ask for help. So thank you so much for watching, I hope this helped you, and see you next time.